Hyperthreading. It misleads so many people who mistake it to mean double the physical core count. As in, if an i7 has 4 cores and hyperthreading, it has 8 effective cores, right? I mean, even hardware monitor sees 8 threads and so do most games, so why aren't we seeing double the compute power? Because hyperthreading doesn't magically increase core count, that's why. My i7-6700K still has 4 physical cores, period. The logical core count increases, but that in terms of what we'd physically see if we study the die of the CPU would be as far as it goes. Want hyperthreading explained in 4 minutes or less? Minute Science. Hyperthreading is simply a proprietary multi-threading process by which adept schedulers interact with compute data in a more efficient way to parallelize processes. In simple terms, it allows the CPU scheduler to more appropriately allocate data to be processed by logical cores, two of which comprise a single physical core. Logical cores are a computer's way of replicating certain aspects of a CPU's architecture. By implementing hyperthreading on a single core, two logical cores are detected by a modern operating system, and data is streamlined in such a way to benefit from this duplication. When large chunks of information are fed down a pipeline, the scheduler in charge will more appropriately divide data between the two logical cores in an effort to maximize productivity. So here's the trick. Since only one core governs both logical cores, only one pipeline at a time can send information through to be processed. You would need two physical cores to process data simultaneously, I make that very clear right here. The catch is, with the scheduler now seeing a fork in the road, it can hunt for the next data stream in the sequence for LC2 while sending information down LC1. By the time LC2 data reaches the process point, LC1 data has already been executed. In a scenario without hyperthreading, data won't always be prepared in time. These animations happen almost instantaneously in the real world, but if information isn't prepared by the scheduler quick enough, the pressure's on because only one logical core exists per physical core. The scheduler can't efficiently prepare data while it's sending data, resulting in delays, bottlenecks, and even noticeable lag. Watch this video for a visual representation of that. So hyperthreading doesn't increase core count. It just tricks the scheduler into thinking that the physical core in question has twice its architectural pipelines. A Core i5-6400 has four physical cores, which can all process information simultaneously. But in the event that too much information is being fed to all four pipelines, things can slow down and the scheduler can be overloaded with information waiting to be processed. But in the case of the Core i7-6700, K, the same number of physical cores exists, only with the added benefit of a more efficient scheduler which appropriately divides, reorders, and sorts information down two logical cores. If the data stream is light, then both processors will compute about on par with each other, and hyperthreading will go unneeded. However, in the case of heavy workloads, hyperthreading can come in very handy. It reduces the number of stalls and increases overall efficiency, which is why CPUs equipped with hyperthreading generally sell for a higher price than their non-hyperthreaded counterparts, all other things equal. So the next time you're on the hunt for a new processor, ask yourself whether or not your personal workload will benefit from hyperthreading, assuming you're choosing between an i5 without it and an i7 with it. If all you do is play video games on your PC, this video right here will answer that question for you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, and subscribe if you haven't already for more interesting videos like this one. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.